Hey guys, Joe back here again with you to take a look at a very, very special diecast vehicle. This time it's not NASCAR, no, no. It is the 06 Sirius XM AutoNation Honda for Elio Castroneves and Meyer Shank Racing from their 2021 Indianapolis 500 victory. The 2021 champion of the race, Elio Castroneves, his fourth. Uh, matching the all-time record for victories in the Indianapolis 500. Greenlight always does a fantastic job from what I've seen. This is actually the first time I've gotten a 118th scale IndyCar diecast from Greenlight. I've definitely gotten a couple 164s throughout the years, but the first 118th scale. So I am very excited to be unboxing this for the first time on camera with you folks at home. Uh, I did scout it a little bit, so you know, haven't taken it out so far, but uh, as you can see, it has a nice uh, decorative sleeve, for lack of a better way of describing it, so we're going to start there and take you through it. On the front, you can see Elio with an uh, image of the cars coming to the checkered flag. Thank you, Bristol, in the background. Hopefully you folks didn't hear that, and I pointed it out, so who cares? Um... <laughs> This is on the right. This is the actual box, so we'll get into that momentarily. On this side, you can see Elio posed with the car, the Borg Warner wreath, and uh, of course the 105th Indianapolis 500 uh, race logo. Here's the box again. Up top, again another drinking the milk. Of course, the strawberry milk, which is really, really, really cool. Um, and then of course the car coming to the uh, the vict uh, victory. Cross the line at the end of the race. And on the bottom, everyone's favorite. Your, all of your licensing agreements. It's an Indianapolis official licensed product. IndyCar, Delara, Firestone. And then all different places where you can get this diecast. Or you can be like me and get it from our friends at Circle B Diecast. Use our code JT on checkout to get your free shipping. So this part I do believe I'll be able to do on camera. So we won't have to do a transition cut. But unboxing this car. So... Take it out of the sleeve, right? There's the sleeve, all nice and separate. We're gonna set it aside for now. We'll run to the other half of the table. That is is very clean, very clean. It's not messy whatsoever. But here you see the box. Green light cars. I I almost don't want to take this out of the rat uh, out of the box, but we are gonna take it out. I think I'm gonna leave it on the plastic for now, uh, for this review because I don't think I think we'll be able to see everything. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, nonetheless, on the front. There's the scores pile on, it wraps up and across, so it's one big photograph that kind of wraps around the front and the top of the box, which is really, really cool. Um, 06, 2021 Indianapolis 500 champion, Elio Castroneves, dumping the milk on himself in victory lane. Up here in the upper right, let's see if we can get it to focus. 118th limited edition adult collectible, contains one diecast vehicle that's very obvious. Up top, again, the cool box design. You have the Indianapolis 500 logo that kind of creeps onto the plastic, onto the uh, see-through portion of the plastic. Green light collectibles logo, Meyer Shank Racing logo there. Go on to the side, you see one photograph, uh, post-race celebrations. Got a nice little checkered flag kind of in the background. Indianapolis 500, some different designs. Of course, Elio Castroneves champion. On the back. You see Indy 500 logo here, Elio with the Brazilian flag, and then here we go, I get to do some reading now. In a flair for the dramatic that matched his charismatic personality, Elio Castroneves joined the exclusive club of four-time Indianapolis 500, presented by Game Bridge winners with a stunning victory with Meyer Shank Racing MSR. Castroneves matched AJ Foyt, Al Unser, and Rick Mears as four-time winners of the greatest spectacle in racing. The Brazilian's previous victories came in 2001, 2002, and 2009. But this this one was different. Castroneves drove the 06 AutoNation Series XM Honda of Meyer Shank Racing to the team's first Indianapolis 500 win and first NTT IndyCar Series victory. Castroneves, 46, also became the fourth oldest winner in 500 history in his first IndyCar start of the season, as he is scheduled to run only a partial schedule with MSR this year. 
Castro Neves, who started eighth, finished a stirring duel with 24-year-old Spaniard Alex Blow over the closing laps by passing Blow with a daring outside move in turn one on lap 199. He held off Blow's number 10 Honda to win by .4328 of a second. The scintillating finish was the climax to the fastest Indianapolis 500 in history with an average speed of 190.69 miles per hour in a race slowed only twice by caution for a total of 18 laps, both race record lows. Uh, last year's Indianapolis 500 was probably one of the most exciting that I can remember in a long, long time. Green flag racing always helps the Indy 500. Cautions always seem to kind of, more than other races, uh, bog it down. Uh, probably that's something that's probably true for IndyCar in general on ovals. But uh, last year's Indianapolis 500 was spectacular. It was so cool to see Myra Shane Quinn. Um, I remember on our Fake Racers podcast episode, we talked a lot about the Indy 500 leading up and after. Um, Indiana, the Indianapolis 500 is like no other race in the world. If you ever have the chance to experience it, you need to. It doesn't matter if you're a motorsports fan in general. Um, and if you are a motorsports fan, even if you're not an IndyCar fan... Um, it is a race that you have to go to. I remember my my first Indy 500, my only Indy 500 to date in person was the 100th running where Rossi won on the fuel strategy at the end. Um, what what a f crazy race. The place erupting when he crossed the finish line to win. I mean, uh, there's so much going on, too. I, we we drove down there from Michigan. We, we live about, what, 45 minutes outside of Detroit. Drove down from Michigan. Uh, left at, I think, 1 a.m. Eastern time to get to the 500 that day. Um, went for the race and then drove all the way back home. I don't think there's another race that I would ever want to do that uh, for. So, uh, again, Indianapolis 500, a race like no other. So, um, definitely something you want to go see here on the other side. Just another photo, uh, nice and edited and pretty, of Elio with the wreath. And it has the Indianapolis 500 champion stuff. Castro Neves, 500 logo, all that jazz. And then on the bottom, have a feeling it's probably the same it is for the most part. Um, of course, the box got scuffed. That sucks. Um, but you see there all the green light licensing things. So if you want to see that, you can pause the video. Uh, looks like it's pretty readable. IndyCar.com, ShopIMS, GreenlightCollectibles.com. But Greenlight does a lot. Um, does a lot. Does a lot of really cool models. In general, um, you can go to your wall, your local Walmart, Meyer, Target, wherever, and they sell green light collectible diecast vehicles. They're usually movie cars or some different like manufacturer. I know there's like a Mopar line that are that look really cool. I, they're more they're usually more on the expensive end, but they are from what I have seen and what I have gotten in the past. They are definitely worth worth it. The IndyCar diecast, believe it or not, right now retail at sixty dollars. These one eighteenth scale cars, which is cheaper than a one twenty fourth scale next gen NASCAR die cast. So, um, something to consider if you're like me and you are very careful with your money, and uh, like to be very careful with your money. That these cars, you get an amazing amount of quality for the price. Um, you know the one one sixty four is now between the two green light and Lionel with the green light Indy car and the Lionel NASCAR die cast are both retailing at ten dollars. Um, that's why, more than ever, it's important to use those free shipping codes at circlebdiecast.com. But these diecasts are so, so detailed. And, I mean, even just looking through the box right now, and, we'll, we'll, again, we're going to take it out in a second, but we'll go through it. It is amazing. It is amazing how cool these diecasts are. So uh, we're going to go ahead. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it out. I did remove the tape. So... Actually, I might actually be able to do this in one shot. That's a beautiful noise. It definitely comes across the camera very well. Hold on, let's see. If we can't... Alright, I'm going to have to pause this, and we'll be right back, because I, I don't want to rip anything. So I will pause, and uh, we'll do some movie magic, and the car will be out of the box. Alright, so back... Back and out of the box. So before we go into detail on the car, again, I don't, uh, I don't think it, come, it doesn't come off. So it looks like I didn't even turn it over. So it's twist tied down. We're gonna, we're gonna probably leave it on there for now because I don't know, I don't have a one eighteenth scale case to display it in, so I don't want to take it off and then have to put it back on. But uh, 
Really cool pink color. We're going to get to that in a second. Just some other details about the box that might have been harder to see when the car was in there. But on the back, you got Elio climbing the fence, which, again, Spider Monkey, awesome. Meyer Shank Racing logo there on the left. On the right, the 06. It's probably a better way to see it. 06 there on the right. Um, and then the checkered uh, flag pattern there on the bottom. So I'm going to, again, move this off to the side. Um, so we can talk about the star of the show, even though we're about 10 minutes into this. So we can get into the die cast. So again, a nice little twirl for you of things, but really, really good looking car. Really like the, uh, don't, can't tell you how much I really like these plastic inserts to kind of protect things. Um, much I appreciate those as a collector, especially because I've had my fair share of cars where the Maybe the plastics kind of rubbed on the on the um, on the paint and peeled it. I don't know how. I might actually have to take this out to get a good look at it. So um, I am. I think I'm going to take this out and get a look at it. So we're going to do another cut. Um, so I can take this off the stand. We can get a better look at it uh, for the sake of having a better diecast review. So one moment, movie magic. We'll be right back. All right, again, another rough cut, but <laughs> we got it out of the box. Um, so here is Elio Castrodev as a uh, AutoNation Sirius XM. I'm gonna try to see if I can get these colors to match a little bit better for you folks. Um, Honda that he piloted to his IndyCar or Indy 500 victory last year. His only IndyCar victory of last year um, in the limited schedule in Indianapolis. Now. What a mean-looking livery on this thing. Oh, my goodness. This pink camera's not doing the pink justice. It's a lot richer. Uh, it kind of looks a little washed out right now on the camera. Let me see. Let's try to... It actually probably looks a little more accurate. Um, but you can see, I mean, the level of detail. Delara, Meyer Shank, Honda... IndyCar logo, Drive Pink, Auto Nation, Sirius XM on the front wing. You got the 06. They're on the rest of the nose cone. These front tires are a little, uh, little. Actually, I don't like how that's kind of pointed out. But, uh, eh, it is what it is. Hopefully I didn't break anything taking it out, because it was not fun to take out uh, with those with those tie straps. But uh, you can see the cockpit there. Got some decent detail. That's not the right type of wheel though. Um, a circular wheel in there. That's not accurate. Um, rear view mirrors that are actually reflective, though that is pretty pretty cool. I don't know if you can tell. You can see my finger in there. Um, so that is definitely really, really cool little detail that they didn't have to do. And these, um, these rods are, uh, have like a carbon fiber print on them. Because I highly doubt that they're, they would actually make car carbon fiber. Um, Firestone logo here, Auto Nation, XM, Auto Nation, Honda. NTT logo there around the aero screen. A um, couple little blemishes here or there. That's actually not... Okay, cool. Um, side pod has Sirius XM listen free through June 8th. That's obviously not still going on, so don't turn on your XM radio. Uh, thinking thinking that we are... Yeah, we're not. Uh, Auto Nation. I can't tell what this logo is. He says Justice Bros. Um, Justice Pros, Pogo there, JB. Um, Sirius XM, P1, Firestone, NTT logos. And then, of course, the red, uh, red Firestones. Powered by Honda. There's Elio's name there on the, um, air intake, 06. Little wing, because it's a Speedway car. Um, 
definitely now want to get a car that's set up in the road configuration. So, uh, yeah, thanks for that green light. You're making a believer out of me with the way this car looks. This is so cool. My goodness, there's even logos. They're hard to see, and I don't want to pick this up too, too much. A couple logos there. As you can tell, I don't know everything. I don't know as much as I would if it was a NASCAR diecast review, but um, out the back, look at that. Whew, that's a good, that is a good shot out the back of this car, but man, oh man, this car. Good, 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 good glory. Yes. Um, I don't know what more to say about this one. Sirius XM up here on the Speedway. Great, great little gas station Speedway. But, uh, this car is so freaking cool, folks. Um, like I said, like I said at the start, uh, these Greenlight Indie Car Diecasts, they are cheaper than um, some of the new, some of the newer next-gen cars that Lionel is putting out. A, a superior, uh, maybe, detail quality. At least it, it just looks a lot better. Of course, they're a bigger scale. This is a 118th scale. Sorry, the camera was wandering. Um, this is a 118th scale car, of course, too, so I don't know what the implications are uh, display case-wise. Haven't tried it yet. Um, don't even know. I'd probably, probably put it back in the box because the box is so cool. But uh, a really good looking car. My goodness. This car is freaking amazing. Cap fixtures there on the side wings. Or plates or whatever you want to call them. Um, on, the front, on the side of the front wing. But this car is fantastic. Again, this pink... Looks a little washed on camera. I'm going to... Again, I'm going to keep playing. See that? We go this way. That pink looks more accurate, but the background is definitely not. Um, that's probably... It's probably the most accurate shot right there. But a, a very, 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 very... Um, <laughs> a very good looking diecast car made by Greenlight Collectibles that... Again, if if you're an IndyCar fan, um, you probably have a favorite driver. Maybe you're gonna get go get a Romain Grosjean's rookie car. I know Jimmy Johnson's cars, of course, were really hard to find for the NASCAR people. Maybe you're gonna get uh, one of the PPG Paints cars because that livery is always fantastic. Um, it was the one that I was actually really considering and had to tell myself no yet because I just don't have the space for it. Um, but this car looks fantastic. Uh, if it comes down to money for you and you're maybe between an IndyCar diecast. You've made a long-time NASCAR diecast collector like myself. Uh, the the quality on this car. I mean, I, I don't see any blemishes. There, I might have caught. There's a little. It might be hard to tell. There's a little scratch on the on the arrow screen, and I don't think it's like race damage scratch. So, is that a little disappointing? Maybe, but I, I've seen people be okay with worse. And I've seen people scream about less. So I am I have never been one to complain too too much about uh, little blemishes and stuff on cars. Uh, you know, I gotta point them out for the sake of the review, but um this car looks fantastic. Firestone tires again looking good. Didn't get a really good give you a good shot of those. Look at that. Firehawk baby. Rolls really nice. Not too not too easy, but not too difficult to roll. Of course, when we talk about 124s, these are not, this this would not be one for if you if you're trying to get a kid give a little kid a car, right? This would definitely not be uh, be one to get to give them because it's a little a uh, little funky, right? A lot of little pieces that could break off. IndyCar could probably do really well for themselves if they found a way to get the green light cars in stores. Because green light, like I said, already has an at store presence. In your shopping aisle at a Walmart, a Target, a Kroger, my or not Kroger, but a Meyer, um, maybe Casey's. I'm not sure about Casey's, but definitely has a presence in a lot of major retailers around the country. So could uh, could serve IndyCar well if they could find a way to get their 164s into stores like that, because they'd be at a similar price point to a lot of those other cars. Um, as always, they're a little more expensive just because of all the licensing 
that has to go into things, but a really, really, really good looking die cast. I mean, think about it, folks. You get the, you get that, the, the sleeve that goes on the box. The box is, of course, really nice. We went through all that. Um, but a really good looking Elio Castroneves car. Again, this pink, not coming out uh, the greatest right now on camera, but it, it looks really, really good. It sticks out. Um, that, that's honestly, paint schemes in general, there's a little chip there too. Um, paint schemes in general, my biggest thing when designing a paint, uh, a livery in this case, or a paint scheme on a, on a stock car would is uh, around the contrast and making sure things pop and this car really pops. Not over not overly overly pink, but also the black kind of helps that pink stand out a little more. Gives the car a sleeker profile, which looks really good. And of course, that's it's Auto Nation's color too, so that uh, makes it a lot easier when you're selecting these colors. But again, this was Elio Castro. The Elio Castro now is the R6 for Meyer Shank Racing. He drove last year. He's of course in this car full time this year for the team with teammate Simon Pagano. A uh, good, good-looking diecast car. I have to think more wins are on the way for Meyer Shank this year in the IndyCar Series. hasn't hasn't been the greatest of starts. I think Pagano was up inside the top five this past weekend in Texas and fell out late um, due to some mechanical issues or a fuel save. Nonetheless, really good-looking diecast. I think you should pick it up if you're an IndyCar fan. I know I say that at the end of all the videos. Uh, if you're an Elio fan, this of course is one that you have to get because a lot of folks had written his IndyCar career off. After he left, Pe left Penske, and it seems like he at least has a couple more uh, big-time wins, as evident by this 500 victory left in him. With all that being said, though, folks, I got this car from CircleBDieCast.com. I'll post the link if it's still available there, um, but you can get it from all uh, major Greenlight Diecast dealers. Remember to use our code JTN at checkout at CircleBDieCast.com. That helps support us, uh, allows me to do some more Diecast reviews for you folks. It also helps support all the boys at JTN. Gives us that extra little, because uh, it gives us an extra little boost when you use that code JTN. It makes us feel good to know too that we're helping you save money on shipping, on that order of twenty dollars or more. With all that being said, though, make sure you're checking us out on social media. You're here on JTN too, so make sure you hit the subscribe button. We do all kinds of diecast reviews. With all that being said, though, folks, I have been Joe Twansky here for JTN two, looking at this beautiful diecast car. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Can't wait to see what we have next for you. So long for now, folks.